Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about creating your own custom VPC. So let's get into the video. So if this is my subnet 1, then I can similarly have a subnet 2 here, which will have first 16 bits fixed because my subnets are created inside the VPC and VPC has got 172 and 31 fixed so when i used 10 over here that was my subnet one i can use one instead okay so you'll be able to see that you can have ips in this fashion for subnet two similarly for subnet three you can have a similar kind of concept so you can have 2.0 so your ips will be 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 up till 2.254 to 255 and so on you can create how many subnets can you create in this range if you are taking slash 24 then you can create 256 subnets inside this okay so the first one will be the subnet one can be 172.31.0.0 slash 24. Second can be 172.31.1.0 slash 24. Third subnet can be 172.31.2.0 slash 24. And similarly, I can go up to 172.31.254.0 slash 24 and 172.31.255.0 slash 24. These many subnets I can have. In total, I can have 256 subnets. This is how I can create my own custom VPC. Now, whenever you are creating VPC, VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. So whenever you are creating a virtual private cloud, it is actually your private network that you are creating in cloud. Okay. All the machines that you will be launching inside the VPC will be privately accessed by your company users only. Unless and until you provide a public access to it. But when we are creating a VPC, virtual private network, that means it is an internal network internal network of your company and when it comes to internal network there are only limited ip addresses that can be used okay what are the limited ip addresses the first one is 10.0.0.0 slash 8 can be used in the private network then 172.16.0.0 slash 16 can be used in the private network 172.16 sorry 17.0.0 slash 16 can be used like this for 172 series in your private network, you can use 172.18, 172.19. Like this, you can go up to 172.30.0.0 and 172.31.0.0. So this is one network which can be used. This is another networks which can be used and then there is one more network which can be used in the private VPCs is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. So these are the allowed ranges of IPs which can be used into your internal network of the company. Traditionally, but in cloud. But in cloud, when you create the VPC, 
it actually tells you that the CIDR block, if I write na 10.0.0.0 slash 8, it will give me an error. See, it is saying that the block size that you can use in cloud cannot be lesser than slash 16 and it cannot be greater than slash 28. So I cannot use this slash 8 as an option for CIDR here for my VPC. I have to use slash 16 options only. I can use 10.0.0.0 slash 16 like this for my VPC, which means that I have fixed 10.0 and the subnet inside my VPC can have 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Two dot zero slash twenty four, three dot zero slash twenty four, four dot zero slash twenty four. Like that, I can have subnets. And how much I can go up till for the subnets? It can be two fifty four dot zero and two fifty five dot zero. Up till here, I can go. If this is my VPC CIDR. Then this can be my subnet CIDRs. CIDR stands for class less inter domain routing. Okay, this is how you can design your VPC. If rather than this, if you plan to use 10. 1.0.0 slash 16. That means you are fixing these 16 bits to 10.1. Then you can have subnets like this. Understood. The CIDR cannot be less than slash 16. If you wish to use this, then you can have the subnets accordingly. Now, what does this slash 28 means? Slash 28 basically means no Parvati, it is not like that. That slash 8 is being used for government only. Slash 8 is for large organizations. It is being used in normal organizations also, but it should be a large one. That means more than 50,000 endpoints then it should be slash 8. If you have employees up to 100, 150, then you can use slash 24 into your subnet. You know why? Because with slash 24, you can have 256 host IPs out of which five are reserved by AWS. So that means you can have 251 IPs to be used by you if you are taking slash 24. If you are taking slash 16, then you can have 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. These many hosts are possible. Out of which, again, 5 are reserved for by AWS. So how many do you have in hand for you? 6, 5, 5, 3, 1. IPs are available for you to be used. That means these many machines you can create in cloud in one subnet. This is per subnet. If you want to use it. But if you are using slash 8, then your number of IPs that are possible 
is actually 2 raised to the power 24. That is this much. Out of which again 5 are reserved for AWS. But the issue is you cannot use slash 8 in cloud. You can only use slash 16 up till slash 28. And this slash numbers are basically the number of network bits. When I say slash 8, it means 8 network bits. When I say slash 16, that means 16 network bits. When I say slash 24, that means 24 network bits. Okay. It simply means that if you are taking, suppose say if you are taking this, okay, as your VPC CIDR, then your subnets will be your subnets will be like this. One seventy two dot thirty dot zero dot zero slash twenty four one seventy two dot thirty dot one dot zero slash twenty four subnet three will be one seventy two dot thirty dot two dot zero slash twenty four like this you can have subnets up till subnet 255th which will be 172.254 sorry 30.254 slash 24 and subnet 256th will be this these are the possible subnets inside it. Suppose say let us consider this subnet one. The instances that you will launch inside this subnet will be having IPs in this fashion. 30.0.2, 0 30.0.3, 30 30.0.4, like this it can go up to 30.0.254 and 30.0.255. It can go up till here like this, the instances IP inside this subnet. Now you notice 24 slash 24, that means 8 plus 8 plus 8. 24 bits are fixed and only the last bits, 8 bits, are changing the value. Rest 24 are same. This is how the things works for you. Like suppose say if I give you two IPs. I say 172.30.1.34. And 172.30.23 slash 24. Does these two IPs, does these two IPs belong to the same network or not? If I ask you this question, then your answer is yes. Because 24 bits, 1, 2, 3, 8 plus 8 plus 8, 24 bits are similar in both the IPs. That means they both are of the same network. But if I write 2.34 and 1.34, 
are these two addresses belonging to the same network or not so your answer will be no because the 24 bits that is 8 plus 8 plus 8 here and 8 plus 8 plus 8 here they are different because it is slash 24 on this end now so 24 bits should be exactly same so if it is like this the answer is no but if it is like this the answer is yes they are of the same network so now if i am working in ap south uh, sorry if i am working in north virginia so then what i can say that this is my region and the region name is us east 1 these are my availability zones us east 1a us east 1b and us east 1c and you know that with amazon in north virginia we have got six availability zones right so like this fourth one fifth if i shift them a little bit these are the six availability zones the default vpc was having one one subnet in each availability zone now i don't want to talk about this default vpc i don't want to talk about it i will be creating my own custom vpc here what is the name of the vpc that i will be giving so let's go to the portal where in the search bar write vpc click on this link you will be able to land up on this vpc dashboard if you click on your vpcs you can click on create vpc and can give a name k21 virtual private cloud vpc what will be the ip schema that will be used i can choose any one out of the one we have discussed so suppose say i took up that i will be using 192.168.0.0 slash 16 inside my vpc that means for all the machines that will be launched inside this vpc they can be in any subnet but these first 16 bits are fixed for it and now if i click on create vpc my vpc got created with the name k21 vpc so i have basically created a vpc with the name k21 now inside this vpc i will create subnets how many sub subnets can i create till the time i have the available ips i can create as many subnets as i want but for my practical throughout our uh, session which we will we'll be conducting we will use four subnets I can put them in different availability zones or I can put them in the same availability zone also. Like if I want, I can create two subnets
in availability zone 1a and similarly i can create two subnets in my availability zone 1b so multiple subnets can be created in single availability zone and it is not mandatorily required to create subnet in each availability zone it's not a required thing that you are supposed to do okay like at present i am just utilizing two availability zones and i'll create a app subnet here and i'll create a app subnet here also so this will be basically my app subnet 1 and this will be my app subnet 2 which i am creating in different availability zones okay similarly i will create two subnets for my database also so it will be db subnet 1 and db subnet 2 sorry if i want i can create more also my choice but i am sticking to it i'll create two subnets in availability zone us east 1a and will create two subnets in availability zone us east 1b okay now this k21 vpc which i have created was using the ip address schema 192.168.0.0/16 that means the subnets that i will be creating inside this k21 vpc because these subnets that i will be creating will be member of this vpc so obviously the ip address schema has to remain same so what will i do is that for my app subnet 1 i'll use 172 sorry i will be using 192.168 is fixed i will change the third octet to 1 and i will say that it is slash /24 being used here that means all the machines that will be launched in my app subnet 1 will have ip address 192.168.1.0/24 similarly my app subnet 2 will have 2.0/24 similarly my db subnet 1 will have 3.0/24 ip addresses and my db subnet 2 will have 4.0/24 this is how i will create my four subnets clear so this is my app subnet 1 this is my db subnet 1 which are in the same availability zone this is my app subnet 2 and this is my database subnet 2 both of them are in the same availability zone this is the kind of setup that i will be creating let me give it a name k21 vpc so that next sunday when we will come na i'll open up the same page for you so that you remain on the same page 
so this is how it is looking like i have not utilized all the availability zones i have utilized only two so the vpc has been created let's go to subnets and create a subnet also right now many subnets are there already but what will i do is i'll create a subnet here and i will map it to k21 vpc i'll say see the cidr is already associated with this and if i try to write 172.30. Ten dot zero slash twenty four, and I try to create a subnet. It will give me an error. It will say it must be a valid CIDR. Why it is not valid? Because okay, <laughs> sorry by mistake I given it in the name section. One seventy two dot thirty one dot ten dot zero slash twenty four. and i'll say create submit so it is saying me the cidr address is not within the cidr address of the vpc the vpc is using 192168 for the first 16 bits so you should stick to that so 192.168.1.0 as i decided for my app subnet 1 similarly i can add one more subnet i can say app subnet 2 in which availability zone do i want to create my app subnet 1 i said us east 1a this app subnet 2 will be in us east 1b the ip address to be used 192.168.2.0/24 slash one more subnet db subnet 1 us east 1 a 192.168.3.0/24 add one more subnet db subnet 2 for us east 1 b the ip will be 192.168.4.0/24 create so i'm creating four subnets okay so now you see you are able to see all four of them and they all belongs to which vpc k21 vpc although rest are also there if i clear the filters na i'll be able to see all of them a long list but out out of this i just want to see the subnets for k21 vpc i don't want to see it for everyone so if i filter it like this i'll be able to see only the subnets for k21 vpc how do i have to filter i have to filter it with this name that i want to see this and the rest all the four are required to be given otherwise you can sort it with the name and all the four for k21 can be seen here now the vpc that you create now what we can do is na rather than keeping it so big and with all six availability zones drawn over here i will delete these availability zones which we are not using okay so that we can increase the size of our diagram a little bit now let me select it So now this is my one VPC, sorry, one subnet of K twenty one VPC.
and this is my second one because we are not using all of them na so i have reduced the size um, actually streamlined it a little bit so that whatever is required is seen on your screen so this is how your vpc has been created and while creating my app subnet 1 db subnet 1 app subnet 2 and db subnet 2 they all were created inside this vpc right they all were created inside this vpc so they all are interconnected with each other now if i want to give internet connectivity to my vpc if i want to give internet connectivity then i need to create a internet gateway for my vpc right now my vpc is not created oh sorry connected with internet if i want the internet to be connected then i need to create a internet gateway i can create a internet gateway with few clicks i'll tell you how internet gateway once i have created the internet gateway i am required to associate this internet gateway with my vpc let's see how to create the internet gateway we'll click on internet gateways then i'll click on create internet gateway then i'll write the name of the gateway k21 internet gateway click on create once you create it you will be able to see that it is in de attached state you can click on actions click on attach to vpc and select the vpc with which you want to attach it so i'll say k21 vpc attach internet gateway now you see you created the internet gateway and then you have attached to the internet gateway with your vpc like this internet gateway is actually connecting your vpc to the internet this is how it works for you but one more thing that i need to see over here is one more thing that i have to see over here is that the ec2 instances that you will launch inside your vpc will be actually following a routing table now where can i see the routing tables i can see it from here right now if i want to see which is the routing table which is created for k21 vpc so this is the routing table which is created for the k21 vpc this one is the one k21 vpc that means whatever routes are there in this routing table are used by my subnets all which all subnets if you see these are the four subnets which are associated with it what are the four subnets actually all my subnets app subnet 1 2 db subnet 1 2 all four of them are associated with my this routing table how did i saw that we clicked on routing ta table in the routing table i was able to see that there is a routing table created for my k21 vpc
Yeah. See? I'm able to see it from here. That for this VPC, this is the routing table which is created. And the route in this routing table says that if you want to go to 192.168.0.0 destination, then it is available locally. But apart from that, any other destination is not reachable. So what you can do is, you can edit the routes here and can add a route saying that if you want to go to any route apart from this anywhere, then go to Internet Gateway. This 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 means anywhere. Go to the Internet Gateway. Which Internet Gateway? K21 Internet Gateway. And save the changes here. So when you create the K21 VPC, by default, a routing table will get created. By default, the routing table will get created. And in this routing table, by default, there will be a route 192.168.0.0 slash 16 local. That means the CIDR of your VPC can be browsed locally. That means the subnets which are available locally in the cloud are reachable according to this routing table. But nothing apart from that. If you want to reach to Zero dot zero dot zero dot zero slash zero. That means anywhere apart from this IP, then you need to forward the traffic to Internet Gateway. So now all the four subnets are explicitly associated with this routing table. That means the EC2 instance that you will launch inside these subnets can go to these destinations. Either they can reach to internal network or for internet, they can go via internet gateway. If you want a different routing table for your app subnets and a different routing table for your DB subnet, then you can do that also. What you can do is you can click on routing tables and can create more routing tables like this, like app RT. That means this is the routing table for app subnet that I'm planning. It is associated with K21 VPC. I created one routing table. Similarly, I will create one more routing table for database subnet. So I'll say DBRT. It is also associated with K21 VPC. So when I create my custom routing tables, then in those routing tables, again, only this route is there. So this is the routing table I created now. App RT. So this will again have only one route. I need to go and add this additional route into this routing table also. Similarly, the other routing table that we created, the DBRT, will also have only one route, this one. 192.168.0.0 only this one route will be there it means 
i need to associate uh, also this routing tables like this it means the machines that i launch in the app subnet will be able to reach to the internet gateway but the machines that i launch in the database subnet i won't be able to reach to the internet via them because in the routing table of the db subnet i only have the route for the local network whereas in the routing table of your app subnet i have the internet route also that means my application subnet machines will be able to reach to the internet whereas my database subnet machines won't be able to reach to the internet okay this is how i can create my whole setup now we have created the routing tables app rt but they are not associated yet with any subnets similarly we have created the dbrt also which is not associated with any subnets we will learn about this in our next session so if i say i have created the routing table but i have not created this associations that we were talking about this associations are not created we have just created the routing tables one is my app rt let me give it k21 dbrt so that we don't get confused because there are there is already one created k21 dbrt now creating this much and keeping into your account will not get any charges on your account so you are not required to do any kind of clean up after this much work that means you can create vpc for free you can create subnet for free you can create a internet gateway for free and can associate it with your vpc you can create routing tables also for free so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you missed upon any concept or if you want to dive deeper into the concepts then we have something really special for you we have our free class on amazon aws solution architect certification for beginners under this free class you'll be learning about why and who should learn aws cloud services deployment models and aws services as well and the most important part is you'll be getting hands-on labs, job opportunities, along with Docker and Kubernetes in AWS, and amazing, amazing stuff. So if you want to register for this free class, all you have to do is just log on to your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash AWS SA02. And after that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. You just have to click on book your free seat now, select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click on yes, save my seat. And after that, you'll be seeing this kind of page. You just have to save this link on the extreme right, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.